Hey, friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. It's time to grade the stories leading into AEW's Double or Nothing this coming Sunday. I've already done this with the Night of Champions WWE Premium Live event, which is going down on Saturday. That's in the last video. But this one, because the same weekend we've got Double or Nothing, I'm going to be grading the stories, the build, if you will, leading to all the matches at double or nothing so we can go ahead and dive right into it first up uh, there we go uh, first up we're gonna do the uh the title match mjf versus jungle boy jack perry versus darby allen versus sammy Guevara. uh this is the four pillars match they started with a bunch of promos talking about how they, they all had it hard except for mjf they took a weird left turn into Sammy Guevara taking a big fat paycheck and agreeing to lay down for MJF. And then they course corrected with a couple of matches. Uh, and, and, and then they just landed back at promos. A lot of people talking about sleeping in cars and not having it as bad as the champion MJF. I gave this one a C plus. I should give it like a B minus for effort. But was an effort really made? I thought that the opening promo, like the first promo they did when they brought up this whole idea, was solid. And then everything after that was either weird or redundant. Uh, the weird aspect, of course, is Sammy Guevara taking the paycheck and hugging MJF. I don't even, I don't even know what that was about. That was weird. Um, but I'm going to give this a C plus because it just felt like they went into this without really knowing what they were going to do. And when they realized it was kind of stupid, uh, they course corrected and just sort of did nothing except for have people talk. So this is a lot of nothing. I gave it a C plus, not a C because I feel like they tried to do the more than the bare minimum, but they kind of just, they, they really didn't do much more than the bare minimum. Uh, next up, let's talk about the tag title match. That's right. FTR versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I gave this build a B plus because they've done a lot here. They've had singles matches between all four competitors. They brought in Mark Briscoe. They went to the Briscoe fa uh, uh, family farm. I really love Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal in this. I think they're terrific. I kind of feel like they're the good guys in this and FTR are kind of a bunch of jerks. Uh, but I feel like FTR is going to, they're probably going to win this match. But yeah, I, I've enjoyed the build to this. I give it a B plus. I, I, I think that it's been relatively logical. Uh, it's been entertaining. It's been fun. There's been wrestling involved. Yeah, I like this stuff. There's character stuff. Give it a B plus. I think that's a good grade right there. Moving on, because there's a lot of matches to get through. Wardlow versus Christian Cage for the TNT title. They did a little bit more than the bare minimum here. They had Christian Cage come out and tell Wardlow, uh, I'm not, this isn't a title shot for Luchasaurus. This is a title shot for me. And then they introduced a ladder and they choke slammed Wardlow on it. And in the meantime, Wardlow picked up Arn Anderson just prior to this. So, uh, yeah, I, I gave this like a C plus. They did the bare minimum plus a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what they get for this one. Uh, a C plus. I think uh, I'm hoping Christian Cage is going to win that title. I think it'd be great. And it's TNT title. Nobody cares. The title means nothing. They just pass from person to person. Uh, next up, Jade Cargill. Currently at, uh, what is it, like 59, 60, you know, something like that, versus Taya Valkyrie for the TNT title. I give this one a B minus because they did a little bit more. They did more than the bare minimum. They did more than the bare minimum plus. I originally gave this a C plus, but it's a B minus build. I mean, you got the Taya comes in. She's got the same finisher as Jade. Uh, they do a match where Taya is not allowed to use that. They bring the Mark Sterling thing in, which I'm not a huge fan of, but at least it's something. Jade Cargill obviously should be doing much bigger things. She should be involved in the Outcast storyline somehow, some way. Tony Khan's booked himself into a corner with Jade Cargill because she's dominant, but like he's got too many other people that I guess he wants to protect or something. And so he brings in Taya Valkyrie, who's a, a terrific talent. She's really a really good sports entertainer. And, uh, and yeah, I, I feel like Jade's going to win here. Jade's going to get to hundred and oh before. I don't know. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll finally bring up maybe by a hundred. No Willow will be around, uh, Willow Nightingale and she'll take that title off Jade. Honestly, she should be the one to take that title 
off of Jade. So a B minus build there for Jade versus Taya Valkyrie. Let's move on. Here we go. Blackpool Combat Club versus the Elite. This totally anarchy in the arena. This should main event the show. This should main event the show. You know why? Because I gave this an A build. It's the highest score I've given. Uh, I'm giving on this thing. This has been terrific. The return of Hangman Page with the cool eye patch, the screwdriver stuff. Brian Danielson's operating a whole other level these days as a bad guy. Mox is really cool as a bad guy. I think the Blackpool Combat Club turning bad has been a real, a real, a pretty cool thing. Uh, and then the Elite all on the same page together. Man, I really like this feud. I think it's terrific. So I gave it an A, an A for their build. So good job, guys. Hopefully you main event because that Pillars match has no heat behind it. All right, next up, we've got the AEW International Championship Blackjack Battle Royale. Orange Cassidy, uh, of course, he's been busting his ass, uh, putting himself through the ringer. Title defense after title defense after title defense, sort of taking on all comers. And then finally, He's doing this battle royal where he's just like, you know what? I'll just take on everybody at the same time. A 21-person battle royal. Um, I gave this a C plus because I think the actual, but you know what? No, screw that. I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it a solid B. I'll tell you why. Because the actual build of this has been the matches that preceded. All of his title wins have led to this moment where he's just taking on person after person after person after person, and he's been burning himself out. He can barely get off his finisher anymore. And so now he's got this big 21-man battle royale and it's almost as if he's like sort of hoping to lose because he's like, you know what? Screw it. Like, I have no chance in a battle royal. Might as well just do it that way. And if I lose, who cares? Because he's Orange Cassidy. He doesn't really care about shit. He's a nihilist. Um, so uh, I gave this, yeah, I give this one a B. I think that's a good grade. I give it a B because, man, he's had a hell of a title run. And I think it's going to come to an end on the first episode of Collision when Miro takes that title off him. Let's move on. Next one. There they are. Adam Cole and Chris Jericho in an unsanctioned match. Uh, now it's got, I forgot to put the, the updated one. It's got Sabu uh, as the special enforcer for some reason. I gave this build an A minus uh, because uh, I, I thought that like, you know, Jericho putting Roderick Strong over, Roderick Strong showing up, the big Britt Baker beat down. I thought all that was really, really good. This was on, on the way to an A level build. Uh, and then they introduce Sabu out of nowhere. I don't know why. There's no real explanation towards it. Adam Cole said, I knew a guy who knew a guy. And it was Sabu, who's like a million years old. And uh, it really can't take any bumps. So I don't know why like all those five guys in the Jericho Appreciation Society are scared of Sabu. I get it. I know Like when you're a wrestler and you get older, you're more dangerous, whatever. Uh, but it's just an old guy who can throw chairs. Uh, so yeah, A-. minus. Next up. Oh, right, here we go. The women's championship match. Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter. The outcasts versus the homegrown AEW Originals storyline has sort of just started spinning its wheels. Like, they're not doing a whole lot with it. It led to this match, but really it was just Tony Storm saying, hey, I never, like, I was only the interim t champion and, 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 and I want that title back. It was just one promo where she said, hey, I want, I want to come after your title. It could have been Ruby or it could have been uh, uh, Soraya, although I guess they already had their opportunities. Um, yeah, I gave this one I gave this one a B minus because like for a while, the outcast stuff was pretty good. And then it just sort of stopped gaining any momentum whatsoever. So, yeah, B minus on this one. It's going to be a good match, but yeah, you got to be minus. All right, next up, we got the Hardy Party versus the Guns and All Ego Ethan Page. Of course, Page's contract will belong to Hardy Party if they lose this match. Uh, and uh, and I think that's going to happen. I think Hardy Party is going to win this. I gave this an A for the build because this has been a long story that has had all sorts of stuff going on, including the firm deletion, the return of Jeff Hardy, the whole moaning stuff with uh, Brother Zay. Um, yeah, I think it's been really good. It's been really fun. It seems like they're just sort of doing their own creative. They're on their own little island, but it's really, really fun stuff. All the Stokely stuff has been really good. So I've really enjoyed it. I give this build an A, um, and I feel like this isn't even the end of it. I feel like Hardy Party's going to win this, and then Ethan Page is going to have to get his contract out from under them. I don't know. This is pretty good stuff. I gave it an A. So this is tied with the best grade on the whole card. And then finally, and I'm, I think I'm going to put this up before Rampage. I know I'm putting this up before Rampage airs, but uh, there's a trios. The trios titles are on the line. House of Black, 
uh, versus, and I'm be, being slow about this because you want my not want to see the spoiler. It's the acclaimed. I mean, it seemed kind of obvious it was going to be the acclaimed. I think they won something to be number one contenders, but it's official uh, because of Rampage, which hasn't aired yet. Uh, the acclaimed versus House of Black. The build to this has been non-existent, which is a bummer. I give the build to this a D. There's been no, there's, I haven't even done a bare minimum here. They haven't done anything really here at all to set this up. So I give it a D. The fact that they robbed us of an acclaimed music video where they mock House of Black is criminal. Absolutely criminal. Uh, so yeah, leading into this, this this build should have been a lot better because House of Black's like one of the best things I got going and the acclaims like one of the best things I got going. So that gets, gets a D. Anyways, that's those aren't terrible grades for like how lukewarm AEW has been lately. A couple of A's and A minuses on here. So it's all right. It's only one D, no F's. There you go. Anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Who do you think is going to win at double or nothing? Of course, I'll be watching it live with Larson over there at the Going and Raw channels, youtube.com slash Stephen Larson and twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Hopefully you'll join us and uh, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Talk to you later.